Hello everyone, welcome to Pilots Community. And in today's video, we shall learn the working of air conditioning system in an Airbus A320 aircraft. The air conditioning system of A320 is a fully automatic system with least input required from the pilots. And it provides the air renewal and maintains a constant temperature in three zones, namely the cockpit, the forward cabin zone and the aft cabin zone. And in wide body aircrafts, in Airbus family, it could have up to six zones in the cabin. Currently, we are going to talk about Airbus A320 aircraft. Let us understand the air conditioning system of A320 with the help of this schematic diagram. So the first question that comes to our mind is where is this air coming from? Because when the doors of the aircraft are closed, it becomes a sealed system. So the answer to this question is it comes from the bleed of the engines when the aircraft is in air and comes from the bleed of the APU when the aircraft is on ground. APU is uh, essentially a small engine at the tail section of the aircraft, which does not provide any thrust, but it is a power plant of the aircraft that provides electrical and pneumatic supply. So the pneumatic supply of APU is used to provide the bleed air on ground. So even if the aircraft engines are running and APU bleed is on, the APU bleed will be having priority over the engine bleed. But there is one important thing to note. If the cross bleed valve is closed, the bleed from engine number 2 will still supply the air. So let us see what happens to this hot air from the bleed of the engines and how it is brought down to a comfortable temperature to be used in the cockpit and in the cabin. So this very very hot air from the engine bleed is pre-cooled to a temperature of 200 degrees centigrade and is pressure regulated. Then it goes to the flow control valve which is also known as the pack flow control valve which basically controls the quantity of fresh air that is brought into the cabin. And the control of this valve is at the cockpit and using this knob the pilots control the quantity of air that is brought into the cabin and it really depends on the number of passengers on a particular flight. So the setting is done accordingly. After passing through the pack flow control valve, the air takes two pathways. One part of it goes through the hot air pressure regulation valve and the other part goes through the air conditioning pack. Now let us see the working of this air conditioning pack which brings down the temperature of this hot air in detail. So here we have the schematic of air conditioning pack. So the hot bleed air after entering the pack flow control valve which is uh, electronically controlled and pneumatically operated. The air enters the primary heat exchanger which is like a radiator of your car which uh, does the initial cooling by taking air from outside the aircraft via the ram air inlet flap. This is the location of ram air inlet flap outside the aircraft and after initially getting cooled it enters the compressor section of the air cycle machine wherein the temperature and pressure both are increased. After the compressor the air goes through the main heat exchanger which is again a radiator and it brings the temperature down slightly and then this high pressure air reaches the turbine section of the air cycle machine. At the turbine section this air expands and on expanding it drives the turbine. On driving this turbine it loses a lot of energy which results in loss of temperature of the air. So we get cool air at the outlet. Now let us see what happens in this air conditioning pack when the pilot sets a low temperature in the cockpit. So when the pilot is setting a low temperature setting, we want cold air. So the cooling at the heat exchangers needs to be more. So the setting will increase the ram air inlet flap opening and it will close the turbine bypass valve. Now it is necessary to understand uh, what is happening here at turbine bypass valve. So the hot bleed air that is coming through the primary heat exchanger, a part of it enters the compressor and a part of it passes through the turbine bypass valve which then meets at the turbine discharge and we have seen that at the turbine discharge we are having cool air. If the pilot is setting a low temperature setting, we don't want the hot air to be mixed with this cool air or we want very less hot air to be mixed with this cool air. So for that to happen, this valve needs to be closed when the temperature setting is low as said by the pilot and when the temperature setting is high, this valve will be open more so that the hot air is mixed. It is important to note that the ceram air inlet flaps close when the takeoff power is set and when the aircraft is on ground, that is when the main landing gear struts are compressed. And also after landing, when the aircraft speed is below 70 knots, so 20 seconds after the speed drops below 70 knots, this ram air inlet flaps will close. Note that the temperature regulation by the different flaps is achieved by the ACSC, which stands for Air Conditioning System Controllers. And in older aircrafts, this was done by the pack controllers and the zone controllers. So the ACSC is more of an integrated system and is essentially a computer program which sends signal to the different valves as to how much they should open. Coming to our basic schematic diagram, the air coming out of the air conditioning pack, that is the cold air, 
enters the mixing unit where it is mixed with the recirculated cabin air after which it is mixed with the hot air via the trim air valves which is the fine tuning stage of uh, temperature regulation because we have seen that primarily the temperature is regulated by the air conditioning packs by modulating the ram air inlet flap and the turbine bypass valve. The final comfortable air enters the different sections of the aircraft namely the cockpit, the forward cabin and the aft cabin. So this was the normal scenario. Now let us see how the system works under abnormal conditions. As I have already discussed earlier that uh, the older aircrafts had zone controller and pack controllers for uh, regulating the temperature and the flow regulation and the newer aircrafts have air conditioning system controllers that is the ACSC. So this zone controller has two channels primary channel and the secondary channel. As the name suggests primary channel will be the more important channel. So if the primary channel fails the secondary channel operates as a backup but the flow setting function and optimized temperature regulation are not available because the hot air and the trim air valves they close. As we have already seen that the temperature regulation will still be available because the pack will be functional. So by modulating the ram air inlet flap and the turbine bypass valve the temperature regulation will be available but the fine tuning will not be available because the trim air valves have closed and the zones all the three zones that is the cockpit the forward cabin and the aft cabin are controlled to 24 degrees centigrade and the pack 1 controls the cockpit temperature and the pack 2 controls the forward and aft cabin temperatures. Alternate mode message will come on the ECAM in the condition page. Then let us see what happens in secondary channel failure. As the name suggests it is less important than the primary channel. So if this channel fails it has no effect on zone temperature regulation but the backup mode is lost. Now let us see what happens when the primary and secondary channel both fail. So in this case the optimized and backup temperature regulation is lost and the packs they deliver a fixed temperature of 20 degrees for pack 1 that is for the cockpit and 10 degrees centigrade for pack 2 that is the cabin. The failure removes all information from the ECAM condition page and it displays pack regulation. Now coming to pack controllers, pack controllers also have primary channel and secondary channel and in case of primary channel failure the secondary computer will operate as a backup but the regulation will not be optimized. What this means is whatever will be your last flow setting in the air conditioned panel that flow setting will be maintained and no matter what setting you select later on it will have no effect. Then we have secondary channel failure. This failure has no effect on pack regulation but the backup mode is lost. And also the ECAM signals related to the corresponding packs will be lost. Now let us see what happens in case of primary and secondary channel failure. So as a backup the corresponding pack outlet temperature will be controlled by the anti-ice valve and it is stabilized to a temperature between 5 degrees centigrade and 30 degrees centigrade within 6 minutes. Now let us see how this happens with the help of this schematic diagram of air conditioning pack. So we have both pack controller failures. So our pack flow control valve will be non-functional the ram air inlet flap will be non-functional and the turbine bypass valve will be non-functional. So what will happen is these valves will be stuck to their present position during the time of the failure and now what we want is for temperature regulation we want hot air to be mixed with the cold air. So this regulation will be provided by the anti-ice valve. Now coming to the ACSC that is air conditioning system controllers which is there in the newer aircraft models. One ACSC is there for each pack for temperature control and flow regulation. So the pilots can use the pack flow selector in the overhead panel to select the pack flow depending on the number of passengers and the external condition. But in case of a single pack operation or when the APU is supplying the bleed air, the flow will be defaulted to high. So no matter what is the position of the knob, the flow will be high. And in case the low setting is selected and the temperature demand is not met, the system will deliver the normal flow. Now there is another case when the engine pressure demand is not met. Let us say that the aircraft is on ground and the temperature conditions are very high. So what this air conditioning system controller does is it sends a signal to the engine interface units to increase the minimum idle RPM so as to raise the bleed pressure. And similar thing happens with the APU. If the APU bleed valve is open and the temperature demand is not being met. So in case of APU we have electronic control box. So the ACSC sends signal to electronic control box to increase the APU flow output. Now let us see what happens when this ACSC system fails. So the ACSC system is a very simple system unlike the zone controllers and the pack controllers. It is less complicated. It has only two lanes. 
so if one one of the two lanes fail the other one will take over and the system will work normally but uh, but in case the both lanes fail that related pack will be lost and the hot air pressure regulating valve and the associated trim air valves will close now let us see what happens when the air cycle machine fails now we have seen that the air cycle machine is a part of the air conditioning pack which comprises of the compressor and the turbine unit so in case the turbine and the compressor ceases so what will happen is in case of uh, new aircraft the air conditioning system controller will regulate the temperature by modulating the bypass valve and the ram air inlet flap that is the radiator system will help in the cooling of the bleed air and the acsc will regulate the hot air flow through the trim air valves to optimize the cabin and the cockpit temperature regulation but uh, since the turbine and the compressor section is not working the pack flow will be lower than normal because they are acting like an obstruction there so the pack flow is reduced now let us see what happens when the hot air pressure regulating valve fails so if it is failed open that is the valve is stuck in the open position it will have no effect because we still have trim air valves to control that is to optimize the temperature but if it is in failed closed position there will be no use of the trim air valves and the trim air valves will be driven to the fully closed position so the pack 1 will control the cockpit temperature to the selected value and the pack 2 will control the cabin temperature and will maintain the mean value of the forward and the aft cabin value that is selected from the cockpit then we have trim air valve failure nothing much will happen only the optimized temperature regulation will be lost of that corresponding zone now let us say that we have a situation of smoke inside the aircraft so in a situation like this we don't want the smoky air to be recirculated inside the aircraft so there has to be a source from outside which lets the air in so for the purpose of that there is an emergency ram air inlet valve which is there under the belly of the aircraft which allows intake of outside air in the event of an emergency like this also if we have a dual pack failure since we will not be having any source of air so this particular valve can be used and this valve is controlled by the ram air push button on the air conditioning panel and it has a guarded switch so when the ram air push button is on the outflow valve will open about 50% provided that the differential pressure is less than 1 psi so if the differential pressure is not less than 1 psi even if you select this ram air push button to on nothing will happen so if we don't have a automatic operation of the outflow valve the valve will not open and you have to do it manually from the overhead panel and if the delta p is less than 1 then on selection of this uh, guarded push button the emergency ram air valve will open and the air from outside the aircraft will be mixed in the mixer unit so basically this emergency ram air inlet valve has direct connection to the mixer unit and that's why it will provide air in all the three zones of the aircraft directly so one important point to notice if by any chance you have the ditching push button on then in that case the emergency ram air valve will not open because it is below the flotation line now let us see the controls for the air conditioning system in the cockpit and their corresponding indications in the ecam so this is the air conditioning panel in the overhead panel of the cockpit starting from top left we have the pack flow control knob which has uh, three positions low normal and high so depending on the selection here the acsc will send the signal to pack flow control valve to select the pack flow then we have the zone temperature selector knobs for cockpit forward cabin and the aft cabin so the temperature can be selected anywhere between 24 degrees to 30 degrees with 1 degree centigrade increment then we have the hot air push button this controls the hot air pressure regulating valve so if you select off here the hot air pressure regulating valve and the trim air valves will close and if the duct temperature increases beyond 88 degrees centigrade a fault light will illuminate in amber and this fault light in amber will extinguish only when the temperature drops below 70 degrees centigrade and the pilot resets the switch so both the conditions has to be satisfied for the fault light to go away then we have two pack switches for pack 1 and pack 2 so when the switch is on the light will be extinguished and you will see nothing so currently they are on so the on position means that the pack is under automatic operation which means that the pack flow control valve will only close under certain set of conditions which are shown here now let us see the indication of the air conditioning in the bleed page so starting from the pack flow control valve position so this valve will be in line in green if the valve is open it will be in line in amber if the valve position disagrees with the control position and the valve is open and it will be cross line in amber if the valve is fully closed and the position disagrees with the control position then we have the pack flow indication from low to high 
after that we have a temperature indication which is the compressor outlet temperature then we have the turbine bypass valve position and finally we have the pack outlet temperature then we can see the two pack outlet connecting to a line which indicates a mixer unit and the three triangles indicate the three different zones of the aircraft the position of emergency ram air is also shown and in case of an emergency this will directly be connected to the mixer unit so let us see what happens when we initiate the engine start sequence so here we have the bleed page in front of us and since both the engines are off apu bleed is supplying bleed air to pack 1 and pack 2 now i'll set the engine mode selector to ignition and notice the position of pack flow valves here so putting engine mode selector to ignition notice that both the pack flow valves are shut now and after 30 seconds they will again open no matter whether we start the engine or not there is a delay of 30 seconds in reopening of pack flow control valve so this is all in air conditioning system of airbus a320 aircraft so i have tried to cover everything possible in this particular section and i would recommend that you study from the fcom of airbus a320 and use this video as a reference for understanding thank you for watching this video if you like this video hit the like button and do subscribe to my channel bye bye